जीवन मुक्ति प्रदम दे परम हम सिन नित्यानंदा अ रेयर लिविंग इनकारनेशन इज नेम्ड अमंग द वर्ल्ड्स 100 मोस्ट स्पिरिचुअली इन्फ्लुएंशियल पर्सनालिटीज टुडे परमहंस नित्यानंदा हैज बीन प्लेस्ड अलोंगसाइड द लाई लामा नेल्सन मंडेला ओपरा विनफ्री पोलो कोल्हो एंड अदर्स बाय माइंड बॉडी स्पिरिट द वर्ल्ड्स टॉप एसोटेरिक मैगजीन फ्रॉम वॉटकिंस लंदन्स ओल्डेस्ट एंड लार्जेस्ट बुक स्टोर अ योगी बाय बर्थ ही हैज बीन एक्सप्रेसिंग हिज पावर ऑफ एनलाइटनमेंट सिंस बर्थ He has authored more than 500 books in Tamil and English. Translations of these books are available in 26 languages in Telugu, Kannada, Malayalam, Hindi, Sanskrit, Gujarati, Oriya, Bengali, Marathi, French, Malay, Polish, Portuguese, Italian, German, Danish, Spanish, Russian and Chinese. He is also an exemplary speaker with over 10000 hours of profound life solutions through his discourses social services such as annadan free medical care free educational services with ashrams schools temples hospitals established in more than 140 places around the world offering exceptional services a powerful spiritual healer who has healed millions of people of diseases from migraine to cancer a kriya yogi who has formulated kriyas for physical health and mental well-being benefiting thousands a living master who offers practical solutions for our everyday problems he is the founder and spiritual head of nityananda dhyana peetam a spiritual powerhouse who has revived the sacred vedic tradition by establishing vedic temples in places like los angeles san jose seattle toronto ohio oklahoma phoenix st louis malaysia brazil paris guadeloupe dallas new york new jersey atlanta calgary vancouver singapore and places in india like bengaluru hyderabad tiruvannamalai a spiritual guru for 10 million followers an incarnation who transmits the highest spiritual energy through initiation a contemporary yogi who has revived the vedic science of yoga worldwide through thousands of yoga centers an adept in ashtamaha siddhis mystical yogic powers who has effortlessly awakened the kundalini of thousands and graced them with spiritual powers a dynamic young guru who is an inspiration for thousands of youngsters india's most watched spiritual guru online a beacon of spiritual light who has triumphed over the forces of religious terrorism and political persecution paramahamsa nityananda is an eternal kalpataru blessing the world with the boons of material abundance and spiritual enlightenment He is the 293rd pontiff of the world's most ancient Hindu organization Madurai Adinam Nityanandaya swagatam Ananda anubhava swadam sarva roga nivarakam vande papa vinashaktam Nityanandaya swagatam Nitya muktam nirvikalpam dhyana loka pradipakam vande shanta शिव सरासंधाचार्यमदाचार्यपर्यता वे गुरुपरंपरा today you will understand the concept of birth you may think why we need to know about birth to live enlightenment because birth is over it has already happened what is the use of knowing about birth 
to live enlightenment. Please understand, knowing about birth will reveal great truths to you about your life. Knowledge about the starting point is very important for your travel. How you started, why you started, where you started, when you started, what far you started will really help you to tune yourself to that original truth in your life. If your life is in tune with the purpose of your birth, you are living enlightenment. Please understand. If your life is in tune with the purpose of your birth, you are living enlightenment. A person who is in tune with the purpose of his birth is Jivan Mukta. So knowing the secrets of birth is a very important thing we need to do to be a Jivan Mukta, to live enlightenment, to radiate enlightenment. First thing, you need to know the secrets, how the birth happens. Please understand, ordinary human beings think the moment they come out of their mother's womb, they are born. Some people say, no, no, the moment they are conceived, they are born. Or some say, the moment the outer fresh air, the world is felt, they are born. There are so many theories. Please understand, the truth is, you are born before even the idea of landing on the planet earth happens. See, your birth, what you think as birth is only one incident, one incident in your whole life. I am trying to express some of the strong, intense truths to you. Birth, what you think as birth is not the beginning. What you think as death is not end. Please understand, in the whole life, it is one part. What you think as birth is only one incident. What you think as death is only one incident. You need to understand with a little clarity about the whole life. Only then you can look into the idea of this birth and this death. Only then you will understand the purpose of this birth. If you think this birth, taking the body which you are having now is the beginning, then you cannot know the purpose. You cannot know the purpose. We are just, we need to understand, we are repeating the same thing again and again and again. Only then we can stop repeating. Please understand, unless you know you are repeating, you will not have the intelligence to stop repeating. Small story, in a bar, one guy meets the other guy and says, what's your name? That guy says, Smith. This guy says, oh, I am also Smith. Where are you living? This guy says, just down the street. He says, yes, I am also living there. Which floor? Second house, third floor. This guy says, what, what, what? Believe me, I am also living. That's same house, same floor. Bartender, looking at this conversation, turns to us, other client, other customer, and says, oh God, this is the same thing happening every Saturday. These fellows are father and son. What to do? <laughs> Please understand. We are repeating unconsciously same thing again and again and again because we are in unconsciousness. Our birth and our death is just like this story. The father Smith and mother son Smith 
talking to each other every Saturday. That is what our birth and our death. First thing you need to understand about birth is we are repeating it again and again and again. First. Second, why are we repeating it again and again and again? Because after the birth, before the death, we forget why we are born. We fall into unconsciousness. If we know the purpose of birth from birth to death, we will not be repeating the same thing again and again and again. Man who forgets the purpose of his birth between his birth and death is an ordinary man, unconscious man. Person who very clearly remembers the purpose of his birth from his birth to death is a Jivan Mukta. A person who lives this life at least once very clearly knowing the purpose in tune with the purpose if he takes birth again and again even if he takes birth he is called incarnation avatara purusha so knowing the purpose of birth and secrets of birth plays a major role in living enlightenment jivan mukti in the world, there are so many religions, so many spiritual groups, so many spiritual theologies, so many spiritual ideologies. The, I can classify all major religions into two categories. One which accepts reincarnation theory. The other one which does not accept reincarnation theory, which they, says only one life. I am not saying somebody is right somebody is wrong both of them are using these truths as a technique when buddha says there are so many births and deaths he is telling you why are you why do you want to be born again and again and again and die don't you feel it is boring just get out of this get out of this same cycle be liberated and same way, when some other master says, no, only one birth, he means live with consciously, live with awareness and go beyond this. No other time, not much time is left. Even that word should be taken as a technique. Whether Buddha says there is so many lives or some other master says there is only one life, everything should be looked as why it is said. They are using this as a technique to liberate you, to make you enlightened. And please understand, as far as I am concerned, I have experienced a zone, a space, where the truths, many cosmic truths are revealed to me as my own experience. So, not because of my Indian conditioning, not because of my Hindu conditioning, from my experience, I can share some of the secrets and truths about the birth to you all. Very beautifully, very beautifully. The great masters like Ramakrishna, Osho, Vivekananda, Raman Maharshi, all have spoken about the birth and their past lives are many truths related to the reincarnation theory please understand now whatever i am going to express is from my experience i have experienced a state where these cosmic truths have become part of me they are experienced by me so i am sharing those experiences with you all that's all first thing i want to tell you what you call as birth what you call as life in you happens within the three chana of your mother delivering you see that moment when a baby is being delivered and that moment your individual soul 
individual reflection happens in the body. You may be questioning me. No. Scientists are saying, no, 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 no. Inside the stomach, inside the womb of the mother, the baby has a heartbeat, baby has a life, baby has everything. How can we say life enters only at the moment of delivery? Please understand. Whatever life is experienced by the baby inside mother's womb is the extension of mother's life. Physiologically, baby is alive. Baby is alive. Heart is beating. And uh, body is functioning. All the organs are alive. Physiologically, that is true. But individual conscious soul reflects, enters the body only when the baby is delivered. In one body, two souls cannot stay. Please understand. In one body, mother's body, two souls cannot stay. Two way of thinking cannot happen. Two way of actions cannot happen. So, only when the delivery happens, the soul enters the body. This is the first truth. And second thing, what I call as life does not start when your body is delivered, when you get your body, what I call as life has started long before. It is equivalent to eternity. It is much beyond the time. You are here eternally. Only thing, at some point of time, you think you are here as the body, as you are now. After some time, you think you are here as this body at that way. See, for example, when you are at the age of seven, you thought you exist as a seven-year-old boy going to school. When you are 25, you think you exist as a 25-year-old man doing business. When you are at the age of 50, you think you exist as a 50-year-old man in, with all the success and society. At the age of 80, you think you exist as an 80 year old man, as a completely relaxed and retired. Please understand, you think at various times, at various moments, you exist in various forms and various ways. After death, you may start thinking you don't exist or you do not know how you will exist. That's the fear. Please understand, whether at the age of 7 or 25 or 50 or 80, you think you exist in different ways and different forms. But I am telling you, beyond all these things, eternally you exist. Only one thing, time to time, situation to situation, your identity, the ubadi, that only changes. In Sanskrit, we have a word called, very beautiful word called Ubadi. That word means two things. One added, another disease. Anything added to you is disease. Anything which is changing is disease. So we need to understand the truth. Please understand, this is a very important secret, very important truth. Eternally, you exist. At some point, you feel, you exist with a success, name and fame. At some time, you feel you exist without name and fame, with failure. At some time, you feel you exist as an old man. At some time, you feel you exist with vigor and life. Please understand, the truth is you exist eternally. When this thread, when this truth is understood, all the Ubadis, which gets added and deleted from you does not bring suffering to you. And these additions and deletions does not remove you, move you away from the purpose of your birth. Your purpose of your birth, your bio memory is very straight. Your bio memory is very honest. Your bio memory is very clear. Your bio memory is alive. Please understand. Living the life of straight alive bio memory from the birth till you leave the body 
is jivan mukti as long as you don't have conflict with your bio memory you don't have contradiction with the purpose of your birth you don't have conflict between your life and the purpose of birth you are a jivan mukta first secret you need to understand you are what you call as life enters only during the time of delivery second thing what i call as life is eternal and suddenly at some time it feels it exists as child at some time it exists as a youth at some time it exists as big guy sometime it suddenly feels it exists as a old man and it suddenly feels into the, gets into the idea it may not exist again it exists as a boy as a man old age this goes on and on and on first important thing you need to understand you exist as life second thing when i say you exist as life eternally when you feel you exist as a person individually why that life feels as individual why this gap if we look into that we will understand the purpose of birth why existential reality reflects itself in comparative reality whatever you experience as reality is comparative reality why existential reality reflects itself in comparative reality if we look into that truth if we understand that secret we will understand our purpose of birth we need to look each and every person need to spend little time within himself avoiding the fear and greed to know their bio memory please understand the only thing which stops you knowing your life's purpose is your fear and greed your fear will not allow you to know your purpose of birth because if your purpose of birth is living like a sanyasi in a forest you may have to give up everything now too much is at stake wealth relationship family security comfort too much is at stake so naturally you do not want that kind of revelation to you same way sometimes people think oh now i am a doctor but if my life's purpose suddenly reveals i should have become lawyer what to do now please understand we lived so many years unconsciously we do not know if our purpose of birth is revealed to us whether whatever way we lived is going to be accepted by that purpose or rejected by that purpose we do not know we need to understand this truth the fear that we might have done some mistake or in future we may not be able to fulfill the purpose of our birth makes you keep the purpose of your birth in unconsciousness but that is not a solution putting the problems under the carpet is not going to solve the problem without fear without greed sit with yourself every day what are the thoughts again and again coming in your being in your mind making you work making you function contemplate on it center yourself on it meditate on it please understand knowing the purpose of birth will resolve thousands of wrong decisions you are making wrong moves you are doing wrong things happening around you and within you every day sitting with yourself with a deep awareness see anything done in the outer world to know the truth is experiment anything done in the inner world to know the truth is experience every day sit with yourself 
spend little time what kind of thoughts are again and again giving you power energy intelligence to function what kind of thoughts are again and again putting you in low mood dull depression look look into it go into it go through it live it look again and again and again inside you will see the truth secret purpose of your birth will be revealed to you i cannot give you the purpose like a tablespoon feeding a teaspoon feeding no i found my purpose i can give you the method through which i found my purpose so you can also find your purpose you can also look into your purpose so meditation for this week for next one week 21 minutes morning 21 minutes in the noon 21 minutes in the evening in sanskrit we have a word called trikala sandhya three times when the different time zones meet see when morning and day meets when the day and the the noon the midday and in the evening when the day and night meets this three time all these three times next one week sit with yourself 21 minutes and look into yourself what kind of thoughts are giving me power energy what kind of thoughts awaken my bio memory interest me and what kinds of ideas are depressing me making me dull relaxed look in look in and within this one week one week each day three session 21 session 21 minutes per session within this 21 sessions you will see many truths will be revealed to you many clarity about your purpose of birth will be revealed to you now let us start exploring the first truth the first important thing about living enlightenment purpose of birth the truth about the birth pratyaksha pada puja offer your gratitude to the lotus feet of paramahamsa nityananda pratyaksha pada puja is a rare opportunity in a lifetime to express your surrender and gratitude directly at the feet of the master daily at 7 am ist you can register for e pada puja online you can receive individual darshan and blessings after the puja you can send your blessings request to ntv@nithyananda.org or call 919742203311 make the best use of this rare opportunity to be in the space of the living and enlightened master to the questions related to birth why do we forget the purpose of life when we are born beautiful question please understand when you go through the process of birth your body slowly comes out of mother's womb with a heavy pressure it comes out that is the moment when the life individual soul reflects on the body so it's a very strong process one you are coming out of the place where you are very comfortable cozy cool happy and completely protected and secure you don't need to think about your food you don't even need to think about breathing because life was extension of mother's life so there is no responsibility you are completely protected secured from that secure place you are moving into a space where you need to take the responsibility for yourself first thing 
Now, you need to start breathing. You need to start eating. You need to start digesting. Now, you are responsible for your life. You need to enter into the different space where you become responsible for everything. So, this is a very big change. First thing. Second thing, the individual life is settling into your nervous system. So, it's a big chaos. In this big chaos, naturally, you forget the purpose for which you assumed this body. You assume this body. That is why I always tell people, when you are in the body, go to that silence where you can really relive the moment of birth. You need to become so silent so settled into your being where you can encounter the moment when your life and body overlap on each other, when your life and your body met each other, when you started taking the responsibility of breathing, when first time you threw the mucus through your nose out, first time you started inhaling and exhaling, if you settle with yourself, you can go to that space. When you understand, experience that space even once, you will see very beautifully, very clearly the purpose of your life, which you have forgotten. Actually, the chaos which happened during your birth made you forget why we are born, why you took birth. The purpose of life is forgotten because of the chaos you go through at the time of birth. Now, if you rest, enter into the silence, go back to the same moment. Go back into that same deep moment. You will know the purpose of life. You will accept. You will understand. The next question. Do I have the same purpose of life in every birth? No. Before the birth, at your previous death, see, before you leave the body, your whole life is presented in front of you. You see the whole thing, all the major things which you thought as essence of your life. You see, when you live, you think many outer world things as essence of your life. Many things drives you. For somebody, money drives their life. For somebody, love drives their life. For somebody, eating drives their life. For somebody, sex drives their life. For somebody, power drives their life. Whatever may be driving your life, Whatever is purpose of, whatever you think as purpose of your life, you run behind it. At the moment of death, you will evaluate whether your running was proper, whether your running was right or wrong. If your running was right, you will think, oh, that's right. Then I will run for the same purpose in next life also, in a deeper sense, in a much higher scale. If you feel for which you ran in this life did not give what you wanted, you will see, no, let me change the direction. Let me change the direction. So please understand, the purpose for which you ran in your life, at the time of death, if you feel you are fulfilled, then you may not be bothered to take one more birth. If you feel the purpose for which you are running gave you a lot, but you need to run in that same direction more. Then you may take the life and have same thing as a purpose in a higher scale. But if you think, no, for what you ran did not give that fulfillment or did not make you feel happy, comfortable, then naturally you will feel, oh, then let me change the purpose of life. Before the death, your whole life will be in front of you, like a fast forward. 
based on that you make the decision on purpose of next life for example if somebody thinks during the moment of death eating was the best thing they had in their life that's the best enjoyment they enjoyed in their life like a for example eating all kinds of food was the best thing they had in their life i have i have heard and i have even seen some people they travel country to country just for food just to taste the food they travel <laughs> anyhow so if you feel eating as the best thing you had in your life maybe you will think oh then let me take the birth such a body that kind of a situation i'll spend all my life in eating maybe like a pig pig spends his whole life eating 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 nothing else so but if you think just sleeping and retired tamasic way of life is the best thing you enjoy in the life then the person will think oh let me become buffalo whole life i don't need to do anything so based on the experiences of life what you think as life you naturally decide the course of your next life so during the previous death you decide the purpose of the next life it is not that always your purpose is same many time we do trial and error method we do again and again trial and error method a man who has done this trial and error and perfected his purpose of life and achieved who can tell everybody the ultimate purpose of life and show that path to human beings is master so it is not that the same purpose of life in every birth is carried or people have the same purpose of life in every birth thank you dear one and all the next question can i change the purpose of my birth can i decide for my next life yes that is the beauty of life please understand what you decided in the last birth in the previous death that is the purpose of your present life now whatever change you want to make you can make because whenever you are conscious you are free to choose now you are conscious about the present you have freedom to choose about the future not only about the next life if you are fully conscious and completely break from the past choose strongly you can choose from now for the next moment not only you can change the purpose of next life you can change the purpose of this life if you consciously take decision please understand you are more unconscious more superficial more conscious more deeper if you are completely unconscious i can say your birth is birth and death is death if you are little evolved every day when you fall asleep it is death when you wake up it is birth if you are fully conscious every inhaling breath is life every exhaling breath is death if you are completely unconscious you can change the purpose only during death and birth if you are a sadhaka meditator little evolved you can change the purpose of life during the sleeping and waking up if you are fully aware conscious you can change the purpose of life when you inhale and exhale because inhaling is life exhaling is death even at that moment you can change the whole purpose of life please understand you can change the purpose of life the very life nothing is impossible it is possible only thing how conscious you are everything depends on that fourth question is the purpose of everybody's life the same to get enlightened 
No. I can say, ultimately the purpose of everyone's life is to get enlightened. May not be in this life itself. People may not feel the need for enlightenment in this life itself. They may feel money is the greatest thing. Or they may feel power is the greatest thing. Or if they, feel, they may feel the physical pleasure is the greatest thing. So whatever they feel is the greatest thing. That will be the purpose of this life. But ultimately, when they are conscious enough to understand that they are going through the same rut again and again and again, like a child's playing, kids playing, kids play. Okay, let's see, when you see the kids, they just build sand castles. When it's evening, if they are feeling bored, they just jump on the sand castle, then destroy and go. Again, next day they start playing, building. Again, they destroy and go. If you understand, your life is also just like the play. You build stone castles, leave it and go. Again, come back and build the stone castles, leave it and go. If you understand, you are also doing the same drama, same game, same play. Then maybe one day you will realize, oh, why to do the same drama, same play, same game? Let us be awakened. Let us be fulfilled. Let us be achieved. Let us achieve the ultimate. Then your purpose of life is enlightenment. Till you realize that you are doing the same game again and again and again, enlightenment may not be the purpose of your life. So ultimately enlightenment is purpose of all lives, but all lives may not have enlightenment as the purpose of this life. What about people who die young, have accidental deaths or commit suicide? Have they planned this also as the purpose of their life? No. Please understand, maybe they are prone, their mental setup is prone to attract suicide or to attract accidents. But that does not mean they plan it. If they plan, then how can it be called as accident? Accident is an accident because it is an accident. It is not planned. But their mental setup can be prone. For example, a person who is continuously taking risk, risks, then he can be prone to accident. A person who is considered continuously living in depression, again and again falling back to the suicidal tendency, then he is prone to suicidal suicide. That way only we can say, but otherwise they don't plan particular incident as accident or suicide. So, I don't want to say they plan for accident or suicide, but if they carry that kind of a mental setup, they attract those things in their life. Books by Paramahamsa Nithyananda. In the true spirit of the Vedic tradition, all the 250 books of Paramahamsa Nithyananda are now available online for free. Access the free library at lifelessprograms.org slash books. Based on the state in which you stayed most of your time, that is the state will automatically erupt when you are leaving the body. If you stayed most of your time in the waking clear state, if that was the strongest experience of your life, that was the essence of your life, you will see when you leave the body, only that will come up. If dream state is the state you spent most of your time, or you feel that is the essence of your life, that will come up if you leave, when you leave the body. If deep sleep state was the real experience you enjoyed, most of your life you spent only in that state, then naturally when you were about to die, you will fall into coma. Understand? Based on the person's death, 
we can say how he lived. If a person can leave the body consciously, he lived consciously. The majority of his life was conscious, means in the waking state. Understand? All the time you are able to move your body and mind as you want, do not think you are making state. No. Many times you will be driving, but you do not know in which road you are driving. Only when you reach your office and park the car, suddenly you remember last 30 minutes you drove. At least 200 decisions you would have made to drive right, left, stopping in the red signal. 200 decisions you have made without being aware you are driving, you are doing something. So all the moments in which you are able to move your hands or leg as you want does not mean you are in waking state. Second, the dream state. If you lived most of your time in the dream state, means daydreaming and night dreaming. <laughs> if your body is moving as you want, but your mind is also moving as it want, the accounts will go only to dream state. That hours cannot be considered as a waking state. The person who spent most of his time in dream state, you will see him talking, blabbering, uttering some illogical words before he dies. Not only that, he will fall into the dream state and leave the body. And the person who lived most of his time in the deep sleep state, potato couch we call, who did not do anything else except eating and seeing the TV. And this kind of people, they naturally land in coma before they leave the body and leave the body unconsciously. Only a person who lived, understood and left all these three bodies relaxes into enlightenment. Very rarely, person who has become enlightened again lands in the body out of deep compassion and love. That is what we call avatar incarnations. Person who died with a waking body, he enters. Of course, if you are died in waking body or dream body or deep sleep body, naturally you will take birth immediately. The next body, you will start searching and entering into the next body. Person who died in the waking state, with the waking mood, he will enter into the body, he will enter into the world with another one body, which is created in a normal way, with a physical relationship, with a physical intercourse, with an ordinary sex, he will catch that kind of body and land. And the next, the person who left the body in the dream state, he will select the body which is created by the tantric intercourse, Ma means the meditative parents. Even though there was a physical relationship, there was a lot of meditativeness into that. Both of them were real seekers, spiritual persons. In that kind of womb he will enter. A person who left the body with a deep sleep state, in the deep sleep state, he will naturally enter into animalistic. Means completely the move or the thinking, physical and mental movements are unaware. Animalistic means it may not be four-legged animal, even two-legged animal it can be. It can be even human animals, means who have the human body, 
But the Pratyagatma Chaitanya, the individual consciousness awakening has not happened. He will choose that kind of parents and land in that kind of body. Person who has left the body after disconnecting, unclutching from all the four sarira, the enlightened beings, if they land in the body, they will land in the immaculate conceptions. They will take up a body, they will land in a body which is created not by any intercourse or any physical relationship. Understand? Looks very illogical. Kundi experimented with this and gave birth to Karana. Kundi did not carry Karana nine months. And all other, other five kids, all Panjabandavas and Karana, all the six have been given birth by Kundi in this way. In the way of immaculate conception means created without any physical relationship. The science was alive. Science existed. There is a possibility and even though logically it is very difficult to understand or relate with, the science existed. Even now, the incarnations, people who are left after enlightenment, left the body after enlightenment, they land this kind of sariras. There may, may not have been any physical relationship, but suddenly the body will start getting created in the mother's womb and the child is there. If you see, the modern, even the modern day incarnations like Ramakrishna, when Ramakrishna took birth, his father was too old. But the story, even the reminiscence says, when she felt she is carrying Ramakrishna, the Ramakrishna's mother, the father was far away, somewhere. It's like a, from a Shivalinga, a light entered and she knows she is carrying a child now. Understand, person who left the body beyond all these three shariras, lands by creating a body which is not related to any physical relationship. May, may not, the physical relationship exist, but he knows how to create a new body and he lands in the superconscious body. How does the cho soul choose the body? Hmm. This is a very important thing to be understood. I think in earlier questions I was describing, before taking the next birth, during the time of previous death, leaving the body, you go through the whole thing in front of you. The whole thing is presented in front of you. Whole thing is available in front of you. You go through like a fast forward. Please understand, like a... Whole thing appears in front of you. You can see very clearly. Whatever you enjoyed very strongly, deeply, happens in multicolor. Whatever you enjoyed very politely, mildly, did not enjoy much, just so-so, dull, unconsciously, that goes through in black and white. So you see which was very strong experiences and you decide, do you want the same thing in your future, in your life, in your next birth? Based on that, you choose the body and the place and the way in which you wanted to live in the next life. Thank you. Next question. Can you please define Shana? It's a very beautiful concept. Please understand. In Vedic tradition, time is calculated based on the space, on the being, more psychological than chronological. Shana means the gap between one thought and the other thought. If you are a restless person, too many thoughts going inside you, your chana can be microsecond. If you are a peaceful, relaxed person, your chana can be even one hour or two hours. 
you can see in your own life sometime if you are sitting with somebody who is very calm quiet relaxed comfortable safe feeling secured you will not even find you will not even bother about how time passed suddenly you will see the watch and oh god already 5 6 hours over but if you are sitting with somebody with whom you are not comfortable happy restless agitated every 5 minutes you look at the watch oh time is not moving <laughs> you know how it feels so please understand time is more psychological not chronological so chana means the gap between one thought and the other thought the gap between one thought and the other thought so within three chana you assume the body when you are when your body is being delivered by the mother within three chana you assume that body means if you had a peaceful restful life in the last birth then you can choose slowly and settled into the body very slowly because your chana will be very long if you had a restless life in the previous birth then you have to hurry enter into the body that will be an unconscious birth that is why i say now have a conscious restful relaxed life aware life so next birth you will see you will have conscious birth conscious life leads to conscious death conscious death leads to conscious birth so having conscious life is the technique to prolong the chana next question does the moment of birth space time define the purpose of birth if so can it be changed by planned birth yes the moment of birth space and time really helps the soul to fulfill the purpose of birth to achieve the meaning of birth so i am all for planned birth like a cesarean delivery planning the time of the birth and helping the child to assume the body in a very planned way in a very loving beautiful atmosphere especially like a delivery under the water and delivery in a very receptive prayerful atmosphere delivery during the beautiful blissful mantra chanting and in a very spiritual atmosphere i am all for it creating a right time right space for baby to enter into the world in a very receptive welcoming way by a very meditative doctors healers who are very blissful people blissful doctors meditating doctors who are jeevan mukta doctors in their presence if the baby is received in the planet earth it will really help the baby to consciously settle into the body and experience the purpose of birth i am all for it kailash the abode of shiva explore the peak of mystery with paramahamsa nityananda a living enlightened master to the most sacred pilgrimage destination on earth added bonus A visit to Madurai is added to the itinerary of the full trip with Swami ji after returning from Kailash. For more information or to register, visit n-yatras.nityananda.org or write us at n.yatras@nityananda.org. You don't worry when you are boyhood turns into youthfulness because you just know you are going to continue to exist then why do you worry when the old age 
turns into death and assuming another own body because you are afraid you may not continue i tell you anybody with a simple logic can see how can life end with one body just to do this drama of 100 years i don't think you need so many tools and weapons and instruments like a mind intelligence consciousness no the fear of discontinuity is only for those short sighted fools please understand krishna is not promoting any religious concept or philosophy he is not teaching any theology he is talking to his close friend who is in a big crisis he is counseling his personal friend who is in a big crisis he is naturally not only honest to straight come on arjuna just as the consciousness goes through the tenderness of the boyhood and bloom of the youthfulness and infirmity of old age in this body in the same manner it takes another body the avak and one who knows this does not get perplexed i am not able to add one word in this verse and delete one word there are many other translation which says very blindly oh just like a spirit passes through a childhood youth and old age no the spirit does not pass through childhood old age and youth it goes through the tenderness of boyhood bloom of youthfulness and infirmity of old age please understand it goes through only the characters of boyhood youthfulness and old age the straight truth i want all of you to understand drop all the fears you carry about the discontinuity whether the wealth money you accumulated in the outer world or the wealth all the great qualities you accumulated in the inner world does not get disconnected due to your death and next birth please understand the sacred secrets from this great verse first thing you just move from one body to another body just like how you move from boyhood to youth from youth to old age same way you just move from old age to death and death to again birth next womb next birth and from birth again childhood then youth you don't lose anything understand this is the first thing second thing maybe you will believe this much i think i don't lose my inner good qualities the karma comes the mental pattern comes with me i know but what will happen to all the wealth i created don't worry you take birth again in the same family same type of family i don't want to say same family same kind of family where the same amount of wealth is there 
so don't think you will die as a billionaire and take birth roadside live in slum no neither the great qualities you accumulated in the inner world nor the wealth you accumulated in the outer world is lost by death understand same way if you accumulated tremendous laziness in the inner world and poverty which is side effect of the laziness in the outer world even death cannot take that away from you after death also that will continue to be with you so if you want to transform your life do it when you are alive in this verse bhagavan describes the principle of incarnation the principle of birth and death as i said every time you start responding in a new way to a problem or situation or crisis you take new birth you live many time in one body many minds in one mind many bodies sometime you are stuck with one mental pattern without coming out of it you spend janmas after janmas after janmas lives after lives after lives same way sometime within one body you go through so many minds best use of time is within one body go through all types of minds that's best use of time don't waste cosmic time once in a while when you look back you feel god six years before how i was how i used to respond to every situation how my mental patterns were now see how i am if the period you feel you are different and now you are different if that period is coming down your spiritual growth is happening in full speed understand that period is what i call one birth for some people it's five year some people one full janma also don't feel those days how i used to be now how i am no it's all same <laughs> see that period of transformation is what i call one birth when you look back what was the time you will honestly feel as your old personalities death and the new personalities expression if you look back is it 3 year or 4 year or 1 year or 8 months look back see the transformation period that is what i call as time of one birth of your mind one birth of your mind one life of your mind if all your patterns you are responding in a new way then the old mind is dead one life of your mind actually one life of your mind when it reduces your spiritual growth is intensely increasing if you have not yet started responding to all your major patterns of life in new way then still your mind is not a dead still the period is happening your mind is only getting more old not a dead liberation from birth and death somebody asked me the other day what is the need to get out of birth and death 
no problem come on enjoy but i tell you once you realize the space of freedom even in a remote possible way you will understand the ecstasy if you liberate yourself just from one or two mental patterns and live then you will understand power of liberated life if you are liberated from some patterns then you will understand the necessity for liberation most important strongest pattern with which you are suffering is taking birth and getting into death birth and death is the worst pattern with which you are suffering another one person gave me a letter i have too much of emotional suffering give me a way for death you don't understand birth and death is the worst pattern then all your depression ups and downs birth and death is the worst pattern any beings go through how beings live karmajam buddhi yuktahi phalam tyaktva manishinah januma bandha vinirmukta padam kachyantya namayam let you all achieve experience live express radiate and share the eternal bliss nityananda thank you welcome to inner awakening the most powerful personal transformation retreat you could ever experience in just 21 days thousands are already experiencing the shortest route to constantly high energy levels visible anti aging healing of chronic diseases fulfilling relationships and higher states of consciousness what is the secret behind this transformation kundalini means the inner potential energy once it is awakened opens the different doors for the conscious experience in you i can say which is a master key for all extraordinary spiritual experience this extraordinary program is conducted personally by paramahamsa nityananda in the vibrant atmosphere of nityananda dhyanapeetam ashram open yourself to the benefits of nitya yoga and practical meditation experience physical and mental healing discover simple ways to handle life with success above all enjoy individual darshan and blessings from paramahamsa nityananda every day take 21 days for yourself and carry home the transformation of a lifetime